Oh, uh, hello. Hi. This time we're looking at faith builds. We're coming in at level 150 for this guy. And let me explain why. On the arcane build, we basically needed 20 extra points just to get spells. So that's why we had to go higher level. The intelligence build needed a little bit of a second stat plus more mind. So that's why it's kind of in the middle at 160. But we're at 150 for this one. And that's because on a faith build, you don't require any secondary stats really. Like if you don't want to, you don't need to use them. You got lots of good options without it. So for casting spells, we want to use the best seal available. And that is the Erdtree seal. You need to get to a minimum of 68 faith for this to be the best seal. Otherwise, use a different seal. But that 68 is just a minimum. You want to boost that up by 10 as well because you're going to get the best damage scaling between 68 and 80. Okay, but the cool thing about a faith build is that you've actually got a bunch of different builds all kind of available to you. You can put them together as you like. Faith build, you can do fire damage, you can do lightning damage, or you can do holy damage. you got kind of three choices there. Physical as well. But that's if we're talking about casting spells. If we're talking about infusing a weapon, we've only got two choices. We've got flame art and we've got holy the lightning infusion in this game has nothing to do with faith it only comes from your decks faith decks has no synergy they're just two builds side by side and when it comes to casting lightning spells lightning's a bit awkward honestly i don't really want to even talk about it right now <laughs> we'll come back to lightning another time but the best thing about fire is you don't need any other stats to put into it so the holy version you want to put some intelligence points into it for sure because there's much of holy spells you need intelligence for so for that reason, I think the holy version would be better, probably a higher level than this. And then when it comes to our talismans, we just want to match up the fire to the fire build and the holy scorpion to the holy build, basically, right? We also have wondrous physic so we can use for holy or fire damage, so just match those up as well. Like, we're just trying to stack fire damage, basically, in this case. Um, regardless of what build you're going for, you're going to still want that 80 faith, so it's kind of a core thing. Okay, let's start looking at some of the spell casting options on this fire build. The first staple spell to use in a fire build will be Catch Flame. Catch Flame gives you a burst of damage and you can spam it, so you can do some crazy DPS just like the Slicer. The second main staple you're going to want on a fire build is some kind of fireball. I think the Giant's Flame take these the best because it's a big ball and it explodes when it hits something. Uh, and it knocks the enemies down and all those things are really useful. So best fireball. But as I was working on this and I was thinking about how Flame Serpent could be better if it was a bit more delayed, I remembered another Fire Giant spell, Flame of the Fell God. This spell is really good because it has that delayed onset of attack and that allows me time to do other attacks. So I think this is actually like a top tier irreplaceable fire spell for combos for sure. I mean it's going to be tough to land sometimes but when you land it it's going to be worth it. Which means I actually don't have a throwable fireball on this build. Uh, I'm just gonna have to deal with that, I guess. Just like last time we had purple rain, this time we've got rain of fire. Both of these spells kind of do a similar thing for us. Like we just want to cast them and then continue attacking. So we've got two attacks going on at once, basically. I know this thing had like terrible damage before, and now I think it's okay. Like this seems to be about the same damage as purple rain. I mean, roughly. But rain of fire doesn't last as long as purple rain, and also it covers a much smaller area. So I definitely think purple rain is gonna be the better option. And we've also got Mesmer's Orb on this build. Now, this can be a lot of fun in certain situations because you can fly up in the air. But if you hold it, like if you hold, you charge it up like you're charging it, you can hold yourself in the air for a bit. So that's kind of fun. But it's not only fun, it can be useful. So you can use this uh, hovering in the air to delay an attack, basically, so you can dodge an attack that way. But there's actually another jump up in the air spell that we want to try to use as an opener. Hold on, I want to say this properly. Raptin! Butterflies! So I want to like this spell, I really do. Uh, it is fun, for sure, to go, you know, flying up in the air like an anime princess. I do enjoy that. Like, look at that sass. But it's got some problems, too. What happens is I'm only I'm doing this because I want to buff. And I get the I would get the buff, but I get knocked out. And when I'm knocked, they don't get the buff. Like, there's some weird... Maybe it's the bug. Like, when you get knocked down, should you not still be able to get the poison buff? But... I don't know, it seems like that's probably a bug. But yeah, definitely gonna get knocked down a lot uh, right now. <laughs> One thing I found is like the range where you can actually poison them is a lot larger than it seems. So try to stand a little bit further back than even like what it looks like. But yes, it's true, we are poisoning buffing once again. This is how we get into the stupid territory which we want to be in. But instead of using poison like we did in the last two builds, this time we're gonna use Scarlet Rot because it's more powerful. 
And uh, we're not going to use the one that comes on a weapon, because that one sucks. We're going to use, like, the powerful version, the spell version. Or you could also use a hefty or odd pot. So that's something I did for this build. We've got basically everything going into damage. We've got just enough defenses to kind of scrape by. Ideally, we probably want to go up 60 Vigor, 30 Endurance, 30 Mind type thing. That's kind of a nice spot. Like you can see right now, I'm, roll I'm rolling around in mushroom gear. I don't have any like real armor to wear at this time. But uh, if you pop on the Black Flame Protection, you can see like, hey, that's not too bad. I've got like pretty decent negation there. So, but using a buff in place of armor just adds another dimension to your play because you gotta you gotta watch this buff basically. Okay, but now let's start looking at the weapons. So we're doing this as a fire build. The only ones we care about are going to be the faith scaling weapons that do fire damage in terms of somber weapons. And then all of our infusible weapons, we're just going to use flame art. So whatever weapon you want to use, whatever can be used with flame art. Some ashes of war you can't infuse with flame art, so just be aware of that. But most of the good ones you can. Uh, that's what you want to use. And a lot of people were disappointed we didn't get any holy katanas in this game. I mean, we had holy katanas at home the whole time, we just didn't know. I'm going to show you those holy katanas today. So we've got the great katana, and we've got the nagakiba. Those are the two best um, katanas, IMO. we got the big boy, we got the, the other smaller big boy. But because these two can be infused, that makes them the best in my opinion. On the nagakiba, we're going to go with... Flame art infused, unsheep. It does like this damage. Or at least it did do like this damage, but we got a patch actually when I was working on this, and unsheath got a huge buff, so now it does like this damage. Is that as good as Moonveil? Is that better than Moonveil? No, it's not. The Great Katana, we're gonna go with Flame Skewer. This is the one that's kind of like Giant Hunt, but it gives you fire damage, and you can do a little follow-up attack as well if you want to afterwards they kind of throw a spire in their face and that's nice but if and only if this is not enough holy katana for you well we gotta switch builds and go with a holy build but it can be done but if we do this we're gonna switch up the ash of war to something called sacred blade sacred blade you can put on a great katana check that out getting a holy katana do you know if we had a got uh, a holy katana in this game do you know what it would have had on it for an l2 would have had this on it but who knows, maybe next game we'll get a proper holy katana. But for now we've got these and they're pretty darn good. So. And uh, the third weapon slot, I don't really have anything there right now. I don't have a third best one. But here's some cool options that I've been messing around with a little bit. The uh, So the magma whip is a good one actually. If you like whips, this one's gonna do pretty good damage with this build you're gonna you're gonna find. Whips! And there's a curved sword version of this that's pretty similar. Prefer curved swords to whips, I understand. Both of these attacks are going to spit up lava on the ground, and the enemy's going to stand in it and take damage. I like this one better because it only costs 5 FP, where the curved sword one costs like 12, I think. So. We also got the Magma Worm Scale Sword with PL2 Magma Worm Guillotine. There's also this rare and mysterious unique weapon called the Blasphemous Blade. Um, this one's quite good for, you know, just destroying everything in one hit. Yeah. Also, the God Slayer Greatsword is going to get that fire scaling, so you can use that one on this build pretty well. Although you'd want to go higher into decks, so maybe skip it. That one and Mesmer Spear and Morgoths, they all need a lot of decks to use. They're kind of cursed in that way, so lore maybe. Yes, I'm aware. Or gods is arcane, not me. And again, we're just covering the, the fire scaling weapons here. So there's also lots of faith holy weapons as well. So that's a whole other video, basically. But anytime you could swap from a fire build to a holy build, just sitting at a site of grace. So that makes it pretty unique. But hopefully that's given you some ideas on how to build around faith fire or faith holy. But I'm going to end it here. Thanks so much for listening and have a good one.